This mission is fueled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. Oh, I looked up evil in the dictionary, and the definition never mentioned me. I'd better do something awful to keep my reputation. I have just the thing. This calls for my continually conflicted con artist. Jekyll and Hyde, get both yourselves over here. Hello, Carmen. I was just smelling some nice flowers. Then stomping them to bits! How nice. I'm sending you through the time port to the United States in the late 1700s. There's something special I want you to steal. Bring it back to me in this loot orb when you have it. Go! Time pilot! Jacqueline Hyde just stole something from the past. You've got 28 minutes to get it back, or history will change forever! Boot up the chrono computer! Launch the time probes! Now get going! We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Chrono Skimmer, Engine's Hot, Bio Villains, Evil Plot, our brave squadron leader will help us defeat her and bring back the loot to its rightful place in time. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego? Stop her crime! And solve this mystery. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego? We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. And here's your time pilot squadron leader, Kevin Shinnick! Kevin! Kevin! Hey, welcome aboard, everybody. I want you to hang on tight because we've got a very big mission, but very little time. So let's begin our journey by meeting our time pilot, starting with Brian O'Donnell. Come on, Brian. Nice to see you. And Lee Tendrell. Come on out here, Lee. Give me five. All right. And Jose Sogar. Come on, Jose. Nice to see you, buddy. All right. Well, welcome aboard, time pilots. You heard the mission from the chief. We're going to start by equipping each of you with 100 power points. Great. Now, pilots, our nanoprobes have revealed the time and place where Carmen has sent Jacqueline Hyde. So, let's get things started. Bridge to engine crew. Let's warp to the time of the crime. Chief, we've arrived upside down. Uh, safely. What's our mission profile? Squadron, you've time traveled to the late 1700s. Location, the Northeastern US. At that time, our nation's second first lady was bringing a new outspokenness to her role. She advised the president on issues and helped him with his speeches. In public and in many letters she wrote to him while he traveled, this first lady spoke passionately for her beliefs, like equal financial and educational opportunities for women. She became a powerful role model for future first ladies who advanced their own political ideas. Or so history told us till now, when Jacqueline Hyde went back in time and lifted her landmark letters. Thanks for the facts, Chief. All right, pilots, for 10 power points, name the first lady whose letters Jacqueline Hyde stole. Is it Mary Todd Lincoln, Dolly Madison, or Abigail Adams. Remembering the clues we just heard. Wife of second president, outspoken and politically active, and powerful role model for future first ladies. All right, you guys are buzzed in. Way to go. Brian, what did you say? I said Abigail Adams. All right, Lee? Abigail Adams. And Jose? I said Abigail Adams. You guys are a great troop. Answer is Abigail Adams. Ten points for everybody. 
You know, Time Pilots, if one of you can save the history of First Ladies and capture Carmen, you'll win a complete multimedia computer system. But the big question is, where in time has Jacqueline Hyde taken Abigail Adams' letters? Now, I... Oh, no! We're getting pulled into a parallel universe! <laughs> the Republic for, for which, which it falls! One acme, underhanded, with misery and injustice for all. <laughs> Enough yeah. inspiration. Ugh. Now, have you captured that queen of kindness, Carmen San Diego? Not yet, Commissar, but we've tracked her to the year after World War I has ended. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson has just suffered a stroke. Perfect! No. Soon the government will collapse and there will be chaos in the streets. Oh, yeah. a comforting thought, your loneliness. Unfortunately, First Lady Edith Galt Wilson is helping the president continue his duties from his sick bed. What? That's terrible! Yes, yes, yes. In fact, many critics of the president claim she is running the government, and some even call her assistant president. Imagine a woman wielding such power. <laughs> and what exactly is wrong with that? Oh, no, well, what I meant to say... Do you me... find strong power for women intimidating? Uh, no, no, you I... You don't? I, I, I mean, yes, 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 I do. Oh, yes, please, please. Mm, mm. Enough traveling. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Just remember who's in charge here. It's you, it's you. I am woman, hear me roar! <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a little weird, wasn't it, guys? I guess the evil chief and the good chief have more in common than I thought. Okay, pilots, where in time is Jacqueline Hyde? Is it 1909, 1919, or 1929? Remembering the clues we just heard. The year after World War I ended, President Woodrow Wilson suffers a stroke, and First Lady Edith Galt Wilson helps him run the nation. All right, guys, everybody in. Brian, tell me what you said. 1919. All right, Lee. 1929. And Jose? I said 1919. All right, correct answer is 1919. <laughs> 10 points for Brian and Jose. Lee, don't worry about it. It's early on in the mission. And you know, pilots, Edith Galt Wilson went beyond private letters written by Abigail Adams and became a much more public advisor to her husband. In doing so, she sparked a debate about the role of the First Lady that still continues today. Right now, let's resume our mission. So, bridge to engine crew. Let's warp to 1919. Great, pilots. We followed Jacqueline to the year 1919, but she's about to do some globe hopping in the 1910s. So it's time for global pursuit. Now, listen closely. Watch the globe on your screen and buzz in after I finish the question. If you're right, you're going to get five power points. And if you're wrong, you're going to lose five power points, all right? Remember, we're in the 1910s. And here we go. Jacqueline's experimenting in the city where two-time Nobel Prize winner Marie Curie establishes her Radium Institute. What do you guys say? Going to Brian. Um, Paris. Correct, it is Paris. Then she slipped to the state where voters elect Jeanette Rankin, the first U.S. Congresswoman. Going this time to Jose. Montana. Correct, Montana. Now Hyde splitting to the city where the Women's International Bowling Congress is founded. Going this time to Bri Brian. Bowling Green? No, I'm sorry, it's St. Louis. It's all right, though. She fired off to the country where World War I spy Matahari is executed. Going to Jose. France. Correct. Jacqueline's hiding in the nation where women get the vote on April 30th, 1911. Going to Jose. Portugal. Yes, Portugal it is. Very nice, guys. Let's see how well we did. Brian has 120 power points. Lee has 110. And Jose leading the way with 135. Great pursuit, pilots. Unfortunately, Jacqueline escaped and is still on the loose with the letters. So, let's check in with time to... Hey, it's a clue finder. It's locked on to someone in the future. Let's bring him on board, see if they can help us. Hello, I'm Eleanor Roosevelt. Wow, the first lady. How, that, uh, 
pardon me, but what's with the headlight? Oh, I was inspecting workers' conditions down in the mines. Oh. You see, my husband is about to begin his fourth term as president, and he is confined to a wheelchair from his polio. So he relies on me to tour the nation and report back on what's going on. Sounds like you do important work. Yes, I, I work for child welfare, slum clearance, and minority rights. I believe in trying to make things better for the people. Good, good. Now then, what exactly is this place? Uh, this is a chrono skimmer. See, we travel through time chasing crooks. Oh, I see. Mm. Everything functions properly? <laughs> Heck no. Kidding me, stuff breaks down all the time. I mean, I call Fumbles our ship's engineer, but never fixes it. Never. Mm. Premises in poor condition. Well, uh, I, repair I... efforts ineffectual. Uh, and how old are these employees? Oh, well, they're, they're not actually employees. They're, they're time pilots, and, and they're, well, they're old enough. I'm 12. I'm 13. I'm 12. Mm, yes. Brazen use of underaged workers. Well, well, not, I um, assume you provide them with wholesome nourishment. Uh, uh, well, yeah, there, there is a chrono cafeteria, and, uh, but it's not really for the time pilots. It's more for the engine crew, and some people I really have no idea who they are. Uh, but the food, the food is really uh, odd and weird. Cafeteria restricted. Uh, well, food um, is inedible. I, 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 Manager I, I, is nervous, no, I'm not nervous. I was, I was oddly just... cheerful. Uh, well, Mr. Uh, Smith. I beg your pardon. Uh, it, it's not Smith. It's, it's, uh, it's Shinnick. Yes, Mr. Shinnick. Yeah. I must tell you that I shall report you to my husband oh, and uh, recommend slum clearance. Oh, but I, Although I, I must say, your uniform is a big improvement this year. Well, thanks. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a compliment. Hey, thanks for the clue. Oh, boy. She thinks things are rough here. She ought to check out Jeopardy. You know? <laughs> really rough over there. All right, guys, where in time is Jacqueline Hyde taking Abigail Adams' letters? Is it 1933, 1944, or 1955? Remembering the clues we just heard. FDR about to begin fourth term as president. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, and she works for social change. All right, guys, those are the clues. Everybody lock on? Great. Brian, what did you say? I said 1944. Okay, Lee? 1933. And Jose? I said 1944. All right, correct answer is 1944. <laughs> 10 points for Brian and Jose. You know, pilots, Eleanor Roosevelt's commitment to helping her fellow Americans was appreciated by many, though some disapproved of her activism. But her work inspired many women to actively support causes they believed in. Right now, let's keep things moving. So, bridge to engine crew. Let's warp to 1944. Pilots, we got big problems from Jacqueline Hyde. We made it to 1944, but it's time for a data boost. Now, I'll read a quote. Your job, buzz in and tell me if it's a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt or from the Beatles song, Eleanor Rigby. Eleanor Roosevelt quotes come from press conferences she gave. Remember your choices are Eleanor Roosevelt or Eleanor Rigby. And here we go. All the lonely people, where do they all belong? Going to Jose. Eleanor Rigby. Yes, very nice. The song was a hit for the Beatles in 1966. There is no way of knowing how many people are unemployed. Going to Brian. Eleanor Roosevelt. Correct. I go to beauty parlors. Going again to Brian. Eleanor Rigby. No, I'm sorry, it's Eleanor Roosevelt. Wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door. Going to Jose. Eleanor Rigby. Correct. I like that song, do you? Your life is more or less subject to change. Going to Brian. Eleanor Roosevelt. Yes, Eleanor Roosevelt. Very nice. Let's see how well we did. Right now, Brian has 135 power points, Lee has 110, and Jose has 155. Great data boost, pilots. And just a reminder that all our data is verified by. Encyclopedia Britannica. Question is, where has Jacqueline taken the letters of Abigail Adams? Now, I know when I was a time... Wait a second, what's happening, guys? We've lost all communications! Looking for me, pilots? 
I'm in 1996, and Hillary Clinton, America's outspoken first lady, has a new book that's making news. Yeah, she's, she's outspoken, outspoken, all right. Some, Some people, people think Hillary acts, acts more like a president than, than the president, president and, and nobody, nobody voted for her. But like her role model, Eleanor Roosevelt, Mrs. Clinton fights for causes she believes in, like better national health care and children's rights. Yeah, fight, fight is, is the, the right word. word. Like, like that, that big battle when she led a committee to change the health care system. system. Congress, Congress killed her whole plan. plan. I love, I love it when no one agrees. Actually, Mrs. Clinton believes in cooperation. Her new book talks about how important it is for society to cooperate in raising and caring for children. Yeah, because if kids aren't raised right, they could all turn out like me. <laughs> All right, pilots, you heard the clues from Jacqueline Hyde. For 10 PowerPoints, tell me the title of this first lady's book. Is it Profiles in Courage, Women Who Run with the Wolves, or It Takes a Village? Remembering the clues we just heard. First published in 1996, written by Hillary Rodham Clinton, and stresses society's role in raising children. All right, guys, what a troop, you're already in. Brian, what did you say? It takes a village. All right, Lee? It takes a village. And Jose? It takes a village. Well, it takes a great squadron to get the right answer, and you did! It, it takes a village! Very nice, guys. Ten points for everybody. You know, pilots, the complete title of the book is It Takes a Village and Other Lessons Children Teach Us. Mrs. Clinton's writings, speeches, and work for the causes she believes in continue the tradition of outspoken activists, first ladies. Right now, that history is in our hands. So, Squadron, we've got to make one final leap forward in time, and that means an ultimate data boost. Guys, in an ultimate data boost, each correct answer gets you 10 power points. But if you're wrong, you're going to lose 10. Now, this next round will determine who goes on to complete this mission. Guys, I'll give you a fact about an American first lady. Your job, buzz in and tell me if that fact is true or false. All right, here goes. Remember, true or false. First lady Hannah Hose Van Buren often walked around on stilts. Going to Brian. False. Yes, I think that is false. Very good. During her husband's administration, Nancy Reagan regularly consulted an astrologer. And again to Brian. True. Yeah, that is true. The astrologer advised Mrs. Reagan on when to schedule the president's meetings and trips. Always comes in handy, I guess. Many present-day scholars believe First Lady Abigail Fillmore was actually a man. Going to Lee. Say again. False. Okay, it is false. Yes, very nice. First Lady Ellen Wilson visited Washington, D.C. slums in disguise. Going to Brian. True. Yes. Until her death in 1914, Woodrow Wilson's first wife worked to improve the living conditions of the capital's poor. At her wedding to future President Franklin Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt was given away by President Teddy Roosevelt. What do you guys say? Going to Brian. True. Yes, it is true. Eleanor was Teddy's niece and was also distant cousins with her husband, Franklin. Good family there. The U.S. once had a first lady whose middle name was Kermit. Going to Brian. False. No, I'm not sorry it's true, but the fact is it is true. Uh, that was Teddy Roosevelt's wife, Edith. As far as we know, no first lady has ever been named Miss Pink. Still time, we don't know. First lady Edith Bowling Wilson was a descendant of the Indian princess Pocahontas. Going to Brian. False. You know, I would have said the same thing, but the answer is true. Woodrow Wilson's second wife was the great, 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 great granddaughter of Pocahontas and John Rolfe. That's that, guys, and let's see how well we did. Right now, Brian has 165 power points. Lee has 130, and Jose has 165 also, which means that Brian and Jose are moving on to the next phase of this mission. But Lee, let me see you smile there, buddy, because you did really well. We're proud of you, and the Chiefs here will express our appreciation. Okay, so Jacqueline Hyde has split, but you kept yourself together, pilot, so there's a time that mission pack headed your way. Filled with great games and gear like Carmen CD-ROMs, board games, and the cool Chrono Skimmer cap. Great work, pilot. I salute you. Pilots, let's wave goodbye to Lee as he heads back to TimeNet Command. Are you guys ready for your next order from the Chief? Yeah. Yes. All right, Chief, we're ready. 
Time pilots, the history of American first ladies is at stake. Get to the USA in 1996 and envelop those letters. Kevin, you're in command. Aye, aye, Chief. Time pilots, full speed ahead to 1996. Look, Jacqueline Hyde's got Adam's letters in a cybersphere. Activate the loot tractor beam. See, good always wins over evil. Oh yeah! Well, who asked you? Way to go, guys. We've gotten back Abigail Adam's letters and have them safely on board. Congratulations! Plus, you're now one step closer to winning that awesome multimedia computer system we talked about. But before we continue chasing Jacqueline, we've got to return the loot to the late 1700s. So let's check in with the Chief to get our flight plan. Chief! Time pilots, you must navigate the chrono skimmer through eight events from the history of U.S. First Ladies, starting at the most recent event and finishing at the least recent event. Here are the events on your flight plan. Betty Ford uses nickname First Mama on CB radio. 21-year-old Frances Folsom marries 49-year-old President Grover Cleveland. Former First Lady Pat Nixon dies. Jacqueline Bouvier marries Massachusetts Congressman John F. Kennedy. Abigail Adams becomes the first politically outspoken First Lady. Nancy Reagan introduces anti-drug phrase, just say no. Dolly Madison escapes from British invading Washington. Eleanor Roosevelt begins her My Day newspaper column. That's your briefing time, pilot. Good luck on your journey. Thanks, Chief. All right, guys, since you had a tie, we're going to flip a coin to see who gets the choice of going first or second. So, Jose, you call it. Heads. Brian, you tell me what it is. It's tails. All right, in that case, Brian, you have the choice of going first or second. Second. Okay. You know what that means, Jose. I want you to navigate this chrono skimmer back through time from the most recent event to the least recent event, starting by picking the most recent event on the board. You may begin. Nancy Reagan introduces Just Say No. All right, gonna go back to Brian. Former First Lady Pat Nixon dies. Yes, you've plotted a course to 1993. Keep going. Nancy Reagan introduces Just Say No. Yes, you've steered this chrono skimmer to 1983. Um, Betty Ford goes by First Mama on CB. Yes, you've gotten us to 1976. Jacqueline Bouvier marries JFK. Correct, you've plotted a course for 1953. Roosevelt first writes my day. Correct. You've gotten us to 1935. Folsom 21, Vice President Grover Cleveland. Yes, 1886. She was the youngest first lady ever. Keep going. Dolly Madison escapes from British. Correct. 1814. And Abigail Adams becomes first lady. Yes, late 1700s, Brian. You saved history. Give me five. Way to go. Now, I want you to activate the transporter and restore the loot to its proper place in history. That was great, Brian. You did really, you both, everybody did really well today. That's a great thing about this squadron. You and I are going to move on in just a moment. But Jose, we couldn't have gotten this far without you, buddy. And right now you did so well, the Chief's got another mission for you. And she's here to tell you all about it. You've earned an equipment upgrade, like an Acme TimeNet mission pack. And this portable CD player. Great digital sound, plus super headphones to give you stereo on the go. Head not included. Good work, time pilot. Right now, Jose is piloting the chrono skimmer back to the present. But, Brian, it's time for us to chase Jacqueline Hyde and Carmen through the trail of time. You with me? Yes. Well, let's go. Look out, Carmen. We're on our way. We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. Chrono skimmer, engine's hot, bio villains. Evil plot, our brave squadron leader will help us defeat her and bring back the loot to its rightful place in time. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego? Stop her crime and solve this mystery. Tell me where in time is Carmen San Diego? We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Hey, Brian, we've made it to the Trail of Time. You've got to track Carmen through six time portals by answering her questions. You think you're up for it? Yeah. Well, then, all right, let's go. Ready, set, go, Brian. Go, follow the engine crew to the first portal. It's the year 1876. What movement does Lucy Hayes publicly support? Temperance or woman suffrage? Temperance. 
Yes, way to go. On to the second time, Port O'Brien. It's 1914. Which first lady supports the Slum Clearance Act? Ellen Wilson or Florence Harding? Ellen Wilson. All right, you've got 59 seconds left with four more to go. Keep going. It's 1948. Who advocates the UN's Declaration of Human Rights? Bess Truman or Eleanor Roosevelt? Bess Truman. All right, pull the rope to lift the pyramid. That's it. Keep going. That gate's going to open any moment. Go, Brian. All right. Hey, congratulations. You've captured Jacqueline Hyde. It's 1971. Who's the first First Lady to speak out for a woman on the Supreme Court? Pat Nixon or Betty Ford? Pat Nixon. Way to go. Keep going. It's 1978. Which former First Lady becomes a book editor? Jacqueline Kennedy or Mamie Eisenhower? Jacqueline Kennedy. One more to go, Brian. It's 1993. What national task force does Hillary Clinton lead? Literacy or health care? Healthcare. All right, Brian! You did it! You've energized the capture crystal. Now take it and place it in the front lock chamber to capture Carmen San Diego. <laughs> You did a great job! You captured Jacqueline Hyde, you captured Carmen, and now the Chief is here to show you what you've won. Congratulations! You've navigated your way to this awesome multimedia computer system. And that's not all. You get a year of Britannica Online and the CD-ROM Encyclopedia. Time Pilot, I salute you! Brian, you won the computer system. How do you feel? Great. You should feel great. We're proud of you, you know that? But right now, we've got to head back to the present. And remember, at Acme TimeNet, history is our job, the future is yours! We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. Throttle open, thrusters on, chrono skimmer, Gets us gone, pack extra socks And we'll all beat the clock From the Stone Age to Middle Age To Space Age and that Tell me where in time Is Carmen San Diego Stop her crime And solve this mystery Tell me where in time Is Carmen San Diego We're on the case And we're chasing her through history Nero Skittle Lincoln's beard Newton's apple Disappeared. The All historical information has been verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. This program was produced by WGBH Boston and WQED Pittsburgh. Carmen's journey through time is propelled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. Mission accomplished, pilot. This is Lynn Thickman signing off. To receive a free copy of the 16-page Carmen Sandiego Teacher's Guide with classroom history activities, write to the address you see on the screen. Where can a gumshoe be a gumshoe? With Carmen Sandiego software, available nationwide.